there, there's always a certain amount of time you have with, with, with a player, whether it's years, a day, a week, or whatever. So you say, okay, we have this, we have this X amount of time. Then we put your potential ahead of us. We put your potential ahead of us, and then we, we have an X amount of time to get to that point where your potential is. I'm going to put a rope around my waist. You're going to put a rope around your waist. I'm in the front of you. I'm going to start running to your potential. You run behind me. The only time you'll feel uncomfortable is if you stop running because I'm going to be dragging you because I'm going to never stop running. So if you, the only way that you feel uncomfortable is if you stop running because while you, when you stand, I'm going to be running. So now I'm going to be dragging you. So that's going to be uncomfortable. And now, we, now you're slowing us both down because we may not get it. We may not make it. If you never stop running and I never stop running, we're going to get this right. smooth. And so it, 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 it's going to be uncomfortable because you stop running. It's not going to be my fault. It's going to be you stop running. I'm, I'm going to never stop running. I'm never going to stop running to your potential because what happens is you tell them all the time is that I already made it. I'm, I'm all, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't need you. I don't, I don't need you to, to, to benefit me. Everything, I, I'm, everything I'm here for is for you. I'm already out of college. I already got a wife. I already got kids. I already got a family. I already got a job. I already got whatever. You're the one that's trying to develop. So anything I do is for you only. Right. It's for you only. None for me. Yeah. Only thing I yeah. get out of it is what you get out of it. Yeah. So we, we, we sharing food. And so that right there, once they understand that, but you got to behave that way because, you know, there's a lot of ways to explain that. But they got you got to behave that way. They got to feel that way. Once they do, now you're going to get the most out of it. That's real. I love, I love what you just said. There's a rope between us. Like, yo, one thing you have a gift for, and I found this with all co like people, coaches in general, right? Like, I, in my opinion, our number one job is to love our players, right? And do what's best for our players, push your players, they really love them. Number two job to me is to be a great communicator to the, to the players. And I think that's something you do such a great job of is like you have these ways of explaining things, just like that rope metaphor that really resonates with people. Like, is it you feel like that's something natural or does someone kind of teach you that? Like, like that, that's something I really aspire or, or look up to, admire in you is, is your ability to communicate ways that relate to these guys no I, I i appreciate it um you know I, I don't i don't really know it's just you know it's, it's just it's just the way that the way that you know ways come to me to express what i'm feeling or ask a question or get some information just way, ways that just come to my mind to try to express what i'm trying to say you know it just it just right. comes that way sometimes but um you know but but maybe and you know I, i've been through a lot you know what i mean you know i'm 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 a, I'm a triple OG, so I didn't seen it all, you know, and so a lot, a lot of that has to do with that. You know, I mean, yeah, I, 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 you know, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, on, I've been, I've been coaching cones pre-app. Mm. You know I mean, I'm from, I'm from, I'm from pre-app era. You know what I mean, yeah, I'm, right. I'm, PA, I'm PA. Some of these dudes is, is, is you know, I'm, I'm, I'm before apps. They got after yeah. app, before app. I'm B, I'm B A, <laughs> A A. You know what I mean? So yeah, I've, yeah. Been, I've, I've been, I've been coaching like this before, be, before the app came out. So I don't got to change. You know, and so when when I when I want to when I want to express something, I just I just think I think about the way that that person will understand it. Basically, mm -hmm. I just try to mm -hmm. think about way the way that person will understand it, and then hopefully whatever comes to my head, you know, it works. You know what I think everyone's here for is like some of the real like kind of technique stuff. Now, um, I've learned a ton from you in in all areas. Your wisdom, the way you carry yourself, but especially like the technical shit. Um, one thing I think we, we differ, I try to take so much from you, and I know you've, you've been around the block. One thing that we've talked about recently is how I, I talk about steps in the break area, right? I like, I like to, to coach each individual step, add detail to each step, so that there are nuances you can fix and make adjustments to when things aren't going well. You were telling me how you, you used to teach steps, and then you kind of stopped teaching steps and kind of came up with your own system. Can we, let's, let's start right there in the break area, and if you could just like kind of talk me through how your philosophy's changed and, and where you're at now. Well, like, like you said, I, I used to I used to teach steps because, you know, obviously it takes steps to get out of the break. So trying to be detailed and, and you know and try to and try to individualize each each movement, you know, makes sense. But, but what I found is that it was almost to a point of paralysis by each kid. And so once I got more into what happens before the steps, once I start coaching what happened before before the steps, once I start coaching that more detailed. The steps became a result. Step the, the steps became step three as a result of step two, and so if 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 your if your result is is the way you wanted the steps become a byproduct of, of of step two, and so that's why I went right. away from the steps because at that point now the steps 
at that point, the steps aren't aren't what dictate whether or not you, whether or not the break is good, basically. You know, and mm -hmm. so once you get once you get into the break, the, the, your steps are reacting to how you get into the break. So yes, if you don't get into the break. If you don't get into the break the proper way, your steps are going to vary anyway because your steps are keeping the balance. And so if you don't get into the break the proper way, your steps are going to vary because your, your, your steps are basically catching your balance. If you don't have to catch your balance, then your steps will be consistent. If you have to catch your balance, then your steps won't be the way you want them to be anyway. So it all comes back to your balance and your posture and, and, and your control in the break, in my opinion. And so once I started, once I went away from that, then, and, and then, it, then it provided me the opportunity to do less talking. You know, I, I, I'd rather have detailed simplicity than oversaturation of words you know what i mean and so i want to be detailed but i want to be as simple as as detailed as possible and as simple as possible the detail simplicity oversaturated words that we can you know a lot of times your explanation won't a lot of times guys explanation doesn't fit the clip so you you can hear you can hear guys you can you can look, look you can look on a guy's on a guy's page and he got a, a free explanation and you watch the clip and the and the person's not even doing what he, he's the person not even doing what the word said. So yeah, so so this is interesting to me, right? Is 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 everything and you were talking about the first thing you were talking about that was interesting was you were talking about how you'd rather, you know, you would rather basically use uh some simple words that are effective than use, you know, a ton of words that don't mean anything. I think that's that and, and it, tell me where you learned that. To me, I learned that coaching D one football when you are when you have such limited time with eighteen to twenty two year olds who expand who, whose attention can go anywhere, that's when you really learn the premium of like, yo, less talk, you got to get reps, you got to keep these guys moving. You know, that's really, I think, the level where that's the most premium. Is that kind of where, where you pick that up? Well, not necessarily. Really, really, I think, I think in the Division One football, it might be opposite because, you know, guys want to hear themselves talk so much and you got all these buzzwords. And so it ends up being buzzword bingo. And and you actually aren't even reaching the kid. You you, you impressing you impressing other coaches, but you're not right. reaching the kid. You know what I mean? And so you start yelling, what about, you know, what about you start yelling all these words to him? You didn't you didn't do the alligator release or the whatever, whatever. And then he's just looking at you like when we go over the alligator release, you know, and so so I, I you know, I thought that was an alligator release. And you're like, nah, that, that was a crocodile release. Close, but that ain't the same. Right. So you you got all these coaches with all these buzzwords and they they're not actually reaching the kid because what happens is the actual element or 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 sequence that's happening in the play is so short. That it doesn't even that it doesn't require that much explanation. Mm -hmm. it, just, it just requires a good explanation. Mm -hmm. A good explanation and a big explanation are not the same. Right. You right. Know what I mean? Makes like, a lot of sense. The, yep. the, the situation that's happening at that the situation that you're addressing is is only is, was one second. So how how are how are there that many things to say about that? Yes. All I want to know is the best way to to do it. I don't need to know the longest way. I, I need to know the best way. Now, now sometimes things take explanation. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not necessary. And sometimes things do take more detail than others, but, but sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. And so I just try to determine which one of those are more effective because at the end of the day, it, it don't matter to me if I got to say a lot or a little, I'll do it. But yeah, but I don't mind, I don't mind it being simple as long as it's detailed. So I try to, I try to focus on detail simplicity. Now, what you're saying is true because, like you said, when there's time constraints, you can't be out there on the field, you know, having a conference. There, there right. ain't no doubt about that. What you're saying there is correct. Is, is right. I, I agree with 100. But you're saying it doesn't, it doesn't actually play out that way in college all the time. No, but I'm, I mean, because but, but even when we get in the room. And we get in the room, it can still be simple. Obviously, mm -hmm. on the field, when we got time constraints, we're in a, we're in a hurry, we coaching on the fly. Obviously, it's going to be, you know, a, a short dialogue there. But even, even when we get into the room, it don't have to turn the buzzword bingo there either. Right. You know, right. All, Absolutely. All, it be, all it has to be is, do they understand? Mm -hmm. if, if, if they understand with less words, then that's, that, then that's the most words. If they understand with a lot of words, then that's necessary too. Right. So to me, I go into it first trying to trying to trying to explain it with less words. Mm -hmm. I try to explain it with the less amount of verbiage, and if that doesn't work, then I'll continue to add verbiage until you understand it. Yeah, so yeah. I'll go in there, and I want to I want to I want to go in there and, and hit a single and get on base. Mm -hmm. 
we can move on because mm -hmm. because you gotta you gotta remember what you're dealing with. The kid only got a certain. The kid is like the the kid is like an iPhone too. Like he only got a certain. He only got a, he can only hold he can only hold a certain amount of stories. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like like yeah. and, and all of his stories ain't football. Yeah, and so like like my daughter my daughter phone only my daughter phone don't have the same storage as me. So when I tell her, hey, take a picture of that thing, she's like. Dad, I don't have a lot. Of, I don't have enough storage. You know what I mean, and and that's the same way as a kid. Yeah, you yeah. Can, you, 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 you can load him up with details if you want to, but I mean, is 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 that plant step right there? Do you have to say all that for that plant step? Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean, maybe, probably not. Most usually not. Talk to me about how you coach yourself. Like one thing, another thing I admire is like you're you're very. You're very deep. You're very thoughtful in 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 what you say, why you say it. Everything has a purpose. You're thoughtful in your reasoning behind the things you do. But obviously, like that didn't come from the day you were, you know, 22 years old, you know, coaching at, at a small school. Like, talk to me about how you've coached yourself over the years. How you've got just how you you, you try to improve yourself, you know, day by day. Because what people don't realize the same way a player goes out and says, "Yo, I want to improve my press releases in the off season," or "I want to do this." We do the same shit as coaches. Like, I had to find a way to communicate this better, or I need to teach this aspect better. So it's talking about how you're coaching, how you coach yourself, how you continue to improve yourself as a coach. Well, really, I, I base it on how to, how how who I'm coaching looks, you know. And so, as I watch the clips, as I watch the film, as I listen to them talk, I, I, I try to identify is that the best that they have, you know. As I watch them, as I listen to them, is that the best that they have? If that's not the best they have, well, then how can I get them to be better than that? Is it, is, it, is it something I'm doing? And a lot, and most of the time it is. And so I go back and I try to figure out the best, a better way, a better way to make them better. Mm. And so I don't mind doing that. I don't mind, like, you know, I'm up, I'm up at two o'clock in the morning watching clips. I got to tell my wife, it's Jake from State Farm, because she, she, she's like, what? She's, she, she, she's looking over there and, and wondering where, why I'm not in the team upstairs yet. I got to text her and say, I'm Jake from State Farm watching clips of Jake from State Farm because she, I'm sitting down there, I'm watching Stan, I'm watching Rick, and I'm watching whoever. And I'm like, God, like the break, like that break don't look right. You know, what am I saying? That, what can I say something different? And I'll keep looking, I'll keep looking, I'll keep looking, and then it'll hit me. So I'll, I'll, st I'll stop coaching that other way forever. Mm. You know, I got I got clips in my iPad right now where I don't even like looking at them. You know what I mean? Because I like I'm not even the same. I don't even say the same things now that I said three months ago. Two of my same what? Like you know, I I look at clips and I'm like, nah, I don't even say that anymore. Like I don't even like sending people stuff. Like if I felt like it, I would go back on IG and erase some of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Because like I don't even believe in that anymore. You know. Yep. So that, that that's just it's just it, what what drives me. What drives me is the hunger to make sure that whoever I'm dealing with is 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 the best that they can be at that moment. And so I just keep on looking. I just keep on listening. I just keep on trying to understand how they think and what motivates them, what affects them, what reaches them, what they can do athletically. I just keep on. I, I constantly think about that, and that and that inspires me and motivates me to find a way to get that done. And so it ends up being, you know, it ends up being a development in that way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy how much of a process it is. Like, like the thing you just said, it's cool to hear you as someone who's so much wiser, more experienced than me saying that you say things differently now than you did three months ago. Cause I feel like I'm growing so much and, and no that happens all the time. Yeah. And especially no now too, like with Instagram, like, like, you know, there's so many great resources like us on here who are sharing our knowledge, sharing the work we do with these top guys all the time. And they're like, I learned, I literally, I can't, I love when you post every day. Cause I know I'm going to, if you know what you're looking for, I pick something up from every time you post, there's a buzzword or there's the way you said something or the way you did a drill that I'm like, Oh, that makes sense. Like, let me add that. Or let me, let me take a little bit of this from it. And, and, and I just think it's, yeah. And I just think it's so cool to constantly be curious and, and like you said too, like you'll, you'll, you'll hit the nail on the head and be like, Oh shit. Like that's how I need to communicate this whether it be hearing you say it or just thinking in my own head. And, and I think just people don't understand enough how much of a process it is to develop yourself as a coach too, the way you communicate, the way you relate to your players. And you have to be really thoughtful about those things in your free time. It's not just going to come to you. Like you have to be thoughtful about how can I get through to this kid? How can I better speak on this, this subject? No, no, no. Well, see, the, 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 thing, the thing is though, is like a, a lot of people want to, a, a lot of people want to be great, but they're not willing to sacrifice their life to do it. 
you know? And so all the great ones I've ever been around, all the great ones I've ever been around have been a little weird. Mm. You got to be a little weird to be great. Mm. You got to be a little weird. And so all of them are just a little weird. And being a little weird means, because you got to understand, like, you only got a certain amount of thought in your head a day. At one point, uh, when, once you cross a certain number of thoughts, now you're being weird. But now you're heading to being great. And so you got to be a fanatic about your, you got to be a fanatic about about your goals. You got to be a fanatic about about your success because you know that 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 that's where the word fan came from. The word fan came from fanatic. You got to be a fanatic. A fanatic is a person that has an uncanny interest in one thing. That's a fanatic. The word fan came from that. So like when you when you when I was talking about this earlier today with, with one of my guys. When you, when you watch a Raider game or a Minnesota Viking game, the Raider dude got his face painted. The Minnesota Viking dude got his shirt off. He got a Viking hat on. And you're like, God, that dude's a fanatic. And, and, and if you know those guys' real story, because I'm from Northern California, Stockton, USA. Baby. And so they, they would do stories on these guys in the black hole for the Raiders. And like half of them are dentists, truck drivers, school teachers. And they're out there with silver painted, got no shirt on. But they, yeah. they're fanatics. They don't care. They have an uncanny interest in one thing. And so when you, when you become a fanatic, that is weird, but you can't care. You can't care. And so one, once you become a fanatic about your goals, then you always go push yourself to get better because you're a fanatic. You're a fanatic. And now if, now if, you're, if, you're, if your hunger is to be a, a technician and you're a fanatic about that desire, now you become a fanatic a fanatical technician. Then once you become a fanatical technician and your and your endeavor is wide out play, now you become a fanatical wide out. Now you're about to get better. Now you're gonna be as great as you can be. But you gotta be a fanatical technician, which equals a, a fanatical wide out. And a technician, a fanatic is a person that has an uncanny interest in one thing. A technician is a person that has a, a particular skill in one thing. So if you're a fanatic and you got a particular skill and your desire is to apply those skills in that in that hunger to white out play, and now you're a fanatical white out. And 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 I want to be and I'm and I'm and I'm a fanatical white out coach. So I'm gonna always push myself to be that same that be that same way as I'm pushing the, the, the if I'm that I'm pushing the guys I'm dealing with. If, if I'm telling them to go home and watch themselves and figure out how to get better, I'm gonna go home and watch them too and figure out how to get them better. I'm yep. not gonna go home and watch. I'm not gonna go home. I'm not gonna tell them to go home and watch the, their clips and me go home and watch Martin reruns. I'm gonna go. They go home and watch their clips. I'm gonna go home and watch their clips. And then tomorrow I'm gonna be better. They'll be better. And then we about, we about to get money. No doubt. How long? Like when you start working with a guy. That was very well said, by the way. When you start working with a guy, in, in like you know, for the first time, how long does it take you to realize whether or not he has that in him, like that 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 fanatic about about the craft? Like, can you pick that up right away, or how long you got to work with a guy before you kind of pick up on that? But see, they, everybody has it in them. Everybody has it in them. You just gotta you just gotta say, can you get it out? Mm. Everybody got it in them. Mm. You know what I mean? Everybody got it in them. All you gotta do is all you gotta do is. is is, is can you get it out of them? They, we all got it. They, they won't show up if they didn't have it in them. They got it in them, but 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 can you get it out? If you if they can't get it out of themselves, and you can't get it out of them, then they then they won't get there. Mm -hmm. But 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 they got it in them, or, or they wouldn't have showed up. Right. So now now you decide can you get it out of them, and and what's that going to take? And that, and that's your job as the coach. Yeah, but yeah. They got it. In them. If, if they if they pull up and get out the car, they got it in them. They got it in them, but 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 can you get it out of them? Maybe so, maybe no. That's what yeah, you got to do. Right. What, I mean. what do you, what do you feel like on a day to day basis? Or maybe, maybe no. Let's let's start with this. In your your whole career, maybe bigger perspective. What do you feel like the biggest challenge has been in your coaching career? Like what's been, and it could be personal. Like what's been the biggest thing you've had to overcome to get to where you are now? Um. Probably what we just talked about in terms of just figuring out figuring out how to get the best out of each player. Uh. You know, at that at that at that point in their career, because everybody's everybody's best is different, and everybody's at a different point in their career. So when you're dealing with a group of people like that that are on different pages, in different courses, and different paces, then you got to figure out how to get the best out of them for at where where they're particularly at. So like a young guy, like even like Reek. So Reek Reek comes to me, and my son is out there. Now at, at that point. My son was more developed than Reek. Now, obviously, Reek is a better player than my son. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But at, mm -hmm. at the first day, he wasn't. Yeah, no, that happens to me all the time, too. In, 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 in terms of what we were doing, obviously. Yes, right, right, right. right. 
hopefully no one's confused by, by what I'm saying right there. You know what I mean? And so, so, so you have to look at Reek and say, okay, my son should be at a certain point on these cones. Reek is, should be at a certain point on these cones. But I still need Reek to give his best at the point he's at. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. my son needs to get, needs to get the best out of my son at the point he's at. Mm -hmm. at the, but, at, it, but at the same time, on the same day. And so once I, once I figured that out, if once I figured out that was the approach and that was the goal, then I knew that I was on the right track. But that, that's, that's the most difficult, even to this day, because you got to get out there and you got to figure, you got to figure Reek out because he's looking at you. Yep. You know what I mean? You got to, you got to figure out little Mike, you got to figure out whoever it is. They looking at you. So you got to figure out how to make sure when they leave that, that practice, that that was the best, that they, that, that was the best job they could have done that day. And, and, and honestly, it comes back to everything. Like, I think what you just described is truly the art of coaching. Right, it's it's getting the best out of each person individually. What is what do you need versus what he needs versus what he needs? It's all different, and it goes back to everything we talked about, which is a. It starts with what's your why? What is your intention as a coach when you're on the field? But then b. It, it starts with the love, right? Like if you, I'm not going to know what Jimmy needs versus what Johnny needs if I don't have a relationship with them and I haven't taken the time to get to know them as people, get to know them as humans, study the hell out of their game, go back in the lab and review the film when I tell them. Like everything you just talked about ties into what our ultimate quest is, which is what does Johnny need today to get better, which is different than what Jimmy needs, which is different than what somebody else needs. And that's, that's a struggle that never goes away. I don't give a fuck if you've been coaching 50 years and you've been working with Tay Adams for 30 years. On, on year 31, you're still going to figure out what does Tay need today to get better and take his game to another level. Well, well there ain't no doubt about it because, because now me and Rick on something else, me and Tay on something else. You know what I mean? Right, we, we, right. The, the way I'm talking to Tay and talk to Reek, talk to Sammy, whoever, like, we're we not talking like we did last year. We're not talking like we did last week. You know, I, right. I, I, just, sent, I just sent Reek some workouts the other day, and th those those workouts that I sent him were not were, were not the same workouts I would have sent him, sent him last year on this day. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, mm -hmm. and the workouts I sent him last week, I don't have to explain them to him anymore. Yeah, right, you know, exactly. And, and the workouts I sent him to him last week, he's in them. Mm -hmm. you no, know, last year I would have had to send other people. This year I'm sending him other people and and his and himself. Yeah, yeah. So like you said, it, it never stops it's because yep. it's like raising kids. Like it never stops because no, you're, there, no one stays the same. You're not in the same place ever. Yes, correct. Talk to, talk to me about how because this is something like this is only my second year training full time. Like I, I was a coach for nine years you know, part of an organization, part of a team, different than training. In the, in the end, football is football, but certainly different being part of a team versus kind of running your own independent venture. Talk to me about, about the differences in your mind and how kind of you're like, like how is your day-to-day -day process now different managing your players versus how it was when you were managing 12, 15 guys in a room at Nebraska? Like, talk to me about those differences a little bit. Um, it's, really, it's really the same. You know, it's really the same, to be honest. You know, obviously, guys – you know, obviously you're, de you're dealing with different elements. Like you, you know, when you when you actually coaching in high school or college, you're dealing with academics, that kind of thing. And you know, and then now you may not be dealing with the same aspects, that aspects as you would when you coaching a team. But really, it's the same though, because your communication is the same. Yeah. You know, your your thought process about what they may need is the same. Um, it's not. It's not. It's not a whole lot different for me. I I, I deal with it. I deal with them the same anyway. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I would say, like, you know, I don't know, like, so, yeah, with my top guys, I would say for me, it's, it's the same. Like, the guys who I'm really heavily invested in, the, the NFL guys, the top-level guys who are invested in me as well, like, the, I guess I'm more curious, like, like, how much film do you watch compared to, like, like, do you watch the same amount of film on your guys now as a trainer, you know, quote-unquote, as you did as a player, or do you watch more film now? Like, does any of that sort of behind-the-scenes stuff vary? Or is it, it's... It's... it's, it's it, it just depends. I mean, you know, like like what you're saying, it depends when, you know, it, it, like you said, it just depends on your relationship with them. Right. You know, right. like if, if it just depends, like like you said, I guess the difference would be that now that you, now that you, you know, now that you ask it in that way, I guess the difference would be the way that your relationship is with them, you know, that, 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 and because and that determines your level of communication with them per se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or, or what you think they may need. So that may vary in terms of that. But as far as, like, film watching, you know, I, watch, I watch film on everybody all the time anyway. So Yeah, right, 
Right. No, no. The film, the film, the film doesn't really doesn't really decrease. It's just you know maybe the way that you communicate does. Uh, so what what's what's before we get back to some of the technique stuff? Where's your head at now? Do you want to get back into coaching, or do you like what you're doing now, kind of working independently? Like, like what's next? Nah, I, I want to get back into coaching. Yeah, yeah. And you're, so you're you're looking now for obviously all this shit happened. It's kind of probably slowed things up for you. But you're looking to get back like this season, hopefully. Yes. Yeah. Dope. Dope. Um, all right, one more kind of technical thing I want to touch on, and I'll let you go. So we talked a little bit about breakpoints, and it's, it's helped me a lot. Like, like I, I still believe in the steps. So the way, the way I, would you've helped me understand my own teaching process in a way is that I love talking about – I like the steps. I think I like holding the kids accountable to steps. What I've realized, what I actually do as a coach I didn't even realize is I introduce the steps as like, here's what we're going for. Here's a three-step curl. This is what our, aim, what, this is what our goal is. But everything I talk about after that isn't step related. It's it's kind of the stuff you talk about is your hips, your right. body language, your intention, your balance. Like to to get to those steps, you're talking about all those other things. It's very cool hearing kind of two different ways of, of going about it. But your whole thing is basically like the steps are the end result. All these other things need to steps are still important, but all these other things with your body need to happen first before we can worry about right. if you're getting out in three steps, four steps, or five steps. Right. Yes. Because I because but also also, the other reason why I change is that just because a person gets out of a break in a certain amount of steps don't mean it was fast. Right. Right. You know, so, so the, what, what, what really happens, what, what really matters is how fast you transition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. that, that, that doesn't necessarily have to do with the steps. You, I, it's, it's, got, it's guys, that, I mean, we can go through Instagram right now. You can, watch, you can watch a lot of guys get out in whatever steps you want them to do, but it took them an hour to cook minute right you know what I mean? So if, if it if it takes you an hour to cook the rice, it don't matter what the steps were. The the, the the point is how fast are you getting it? Because at the end of the day, you and the DB are breaking at the same time. Your your, your transition has to be faster than his transition, regardless of the steps. Mm -hmm. Because if your transition is not fast, it doesn't matter. And so what what I'm focusing on is the speed in which you get out of the break. You know what I mean? Because I because I I've been around long lumbering guys or whatever you know guys that go one two three or whatever the case may be but it's taking you an hour to cook minute right so you still don't end up being covered and yeah. so I, I care more about the speed of the break than anything yeah you know I mean so and so if that means you're getting out in three steps you're getting out in three steps if that means you're getting out in three and a half steps or close to four then that's that's so be it because all we're trying to do is get the ball mm -hmm. That's ASAP. When you measure the break time, when do you when when do you start and when do you finish? Like, what are the indicators for you that that were your time? You start. You, the time starts when your hips drop, and the time ends when you do two steps out of the break. Two steps out of the break. Of, and right. so that's when it that that's when it starts because that's when the DB that's when the DB transitions. Your your break time to to, to make it real, it's got to be that way because your. Your transition zone and his transition zone got to be the same amount of steps, or you can't measure it. Mm -hmm. So, and so when your, when your hips drop, you're done going in that direction. When you're two steps going into the out of the break, you're going in. You can you completely commit it to another direction. So at that point, you can measure the two. And so when you when your hips drop and when you step out of the break, do you ever get to a kit to a point where like you know you've taught? Do do you get to a point maybe at the you know? the highest level where it is about steps where like everything's right and they're just taking too many steps. Like, like does that come up for you at all now where it's all about everything else and the steps it, it's it more so particular to the athlete? Like, is there ever a point where it's like, all right, your hips are good. This is good, but you just, you got to get out in less steps. Does that ever come to that for you or, or no? Um, not really. No. Right. That's what I thought. I, I, I don't, I just, I just, I just never, I just never say steps. I just, yeah. I, 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 it doesn't come to that to me because I, I never say steps or I never mm. say like I never say footwork or I never say steps, so like it doesn't come that that to me because I just I just don't I don't I don't now like I said like I was telling you that day we talked if you're still getting it done with that philosophy then I would never I would never change no doubt yeah you know I mean I, I would never change because if you still satisfy with what you with what you're getting then that's the yeah like I, I like I like the way I teach it I like the results we're getting I'm obviously always looking to get it better so I'm trying to take what some things you do and figure out like you know it doesn't make me want to change my whole philosophy but it makes me want to just just improve it how, how what are the things that you're talking about that i'm not talking about that i can incorporate into into what i'm doing which is again that's coaching also is just you know right. learning from guys around us and taking this taking that 
Let's see, but the, the, the other thing that the other thing that improves the break is the vertical attack. You know, a lot a lot of guys, a lot of guys when you see guys do drills, the the, the, the break time may be good, but it's not realistic in the game because your vertical attack wasn't effective enough. It was effective on air, it was effective in the drill, but it wouldn't be effective against a defender. And right. so guys don't have – guys don't attack the vertical like they should. And so that's why they do 100 hours of drills and they get into the game where they go back to practice and they're still getting covered because they didn't – they didn't – they're not attacking the vertical. Yes. You know, you, 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 it can't take an hour to cook minutes. You, you, you got to attack the vertical, attack the vertical, attack the vertical. Therefore, therefore, your break time will improve that way, but, but, but you'll, you'll, you'll decrease the DB's break time. Yeah, no doubt. But also, just like you know, if you if you if you're running all these drills at eighty percent, you're and you're you're riding the bike with training wheels on. I, I expect to know to ride to ride the bike when when you take the training wheels off and you're running full speed. There, there ain't no doubt about it because yeah. what what what's happening is because when 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 I'm when I'm watching a guy and I'm watching him do drills that that I'm working with him with, I want to be able to decide is he getting better by watching the drills. So I don't I don't want to I want to, I want the translation to be English to English. A lot of times when you see guys do drills, the drills they're doing is Spanish, and and then you got to translate it to English. I want to I want to be able to look at him do drills and say, okay, I can tell he's getting better by the way he's doing these drills. A lot of times you see guys do drills, you don't you can't tell if they're getting better because mm -hmm. what what they're doing is so hard to translate into into what they're actually trying to get better at doing. Right. You know what I mean? What, what, they're right. doing, what they're doing is not what they're trying to get better at doing. Right. And so as a coach, you look, because I used to be that way many years ago where, you know, a guy might be doing a drill, he's moving around fast and he looks quick and he's stepping hard and, and, his, and all that stuff's good and his hips are dropping or whatever the case may be. But while you're watching that drill, you can't look at that and say, gosh, man, I bet, he's a, I bet he runs curl good. Right. You know, and so, and I used to get so frustrated when I used to try to try to look at a guy and, and try to figure out if he get better or not, and I couldn't tell because what I had him doing didn't remind me of a curl. What I had him doing, I couldn't decide or not. Is he getting better at slant? Is he getting better at comeback? Is he getting better at dig? Because the drills we were doing wasn't allowed. It was too hard for me to translate the two languages. So now I want to be English to English. I want to look at you do a drill, and I and I, I say, well, I know. If, if he does this drill right, then I know the route's good because it's English to English, you know. And so a lot of times you can look on Instagram, Twitter, like like dudes are they look quick. You like God, that guy look kind of quick, you know. I don't I mean he got he got some quick feet, you know this and that. But you're like you still can't tell is he good at a curl. And so you know I just got tired of, of of feeling that way and not knowing. And so that that to me is 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 really important to be able to translate English to English. When you when you decided when so you you said you were once teaching steps and teaching that specific footwork when you decided to make the transition, how long did it take you? Like how long? Like how many things did you have to kind of reinvent in your head or or reprogram? Like how long did that process take you of, of getting from where you were to where you are now in your philosophy? It took me like five years. Yeah, word. Like like really, because because I changed gradually. You know what I mean? Like 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 you're saying, it's like you know, I wasn't. I wasn't. I didn't just go in there and say, "Look, guys, we're doing it all new now." I just I changed gradually, 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 and then, you know, I it, you just you just you just gradually you just gradually start teaching it a different way. Yeah. And so it it took about five years because I remember the guys I was that I first start tinkering with it with, and then I remember, you know, the guys I had when I was when it became the way I was my, my, basically my new philosophy. And so it, it was about five a five year span. Yeah. And that, that was that I'm glad because any young coach is listening. Like, it's not like you reprogramming the whole way you teach receiver play just happens like that. Like it's a process. And, and I'm sure there are even things you didn't like, the things you wanted to teach different in that process. And you didn't even know how to teach them different. You probably had to, you know, trial and error and try some shit out and, and you know, just, just use your resources and, and take time to figure it all out. Well, the, the trial, the trial and error is the biggest part. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's, yeah. the, the, it's more, it's it's more early on. It's more bad than good. You know, like nobody. You know, I don't, I don't post bad drills ever. Like I don't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. But but it's a lot of bad drills out the day, even with the sweet dudes. You yep. know what I mean. Like yep. you know, it's a lot of bad drills. So it's trial and error, even when it's even when it's good. 
it's still a trial and error because you gotta you got you gotta try to evaluate what, why was their error. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. part of trial. And, that's part of trial and error. Okay, when you see the error, you know why was their error in your try? And so, mm -hmm. so and so and so, you know, it is 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 gradual. It's gradual regardless. It's gradual regardless. So I look at I look at that all the time, um, and 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 try to decide. The whole thing's trial and error. Like like you said, I, I look at I look at old clips now of 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 guys, and I'm like, sometimes you sometimes I say I'm gonna go back to doing that. Sometimes I left it alone too soon. I say I'm gonna start doing that drill again. That was pretty right. good. And, and so you know, it, it, it's 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 constantly trial and error. No doubt. And I think that's an interesting part too. Is like is like you know, especially in 2020 now, where you know, like receiver factory is on here. You know, D Rob always open was on here. Us us too. Like some of the guys who put out content about receiver play every day. For the first time, really, in coaching history, our coaching style is under a microscope and is being heavily critiqued and heavily judged. What drill is this? How are you teaching this? And everyone wants to have these comments. And people don't realize that, like, yo, the same way that this working in the NFL is trying to improve on something, he's a young kid, like, it's, the, it's a process for all of us as well. And, and I might teach something today that I'm slowly working at getting better, and you're watching me in my process and, you know, I think this shit is just much more of an art, all of football in general and coaching and getting in people like it's more of an art. And I think something I talk about all the time is like science plus creativity equals art. Right. And us as coaches, we kind of provide the science. I, I tell you how many steps to take or what your body language should be, what your weight distribution should be. Then it's up to you, the, the, the artist, to add your own creativity. And like you were saying before, everyone who's great is a little bit weird. So for you to be known as somebody great, for you to separate yourself and be amongst everybody else. It's it's that creativity part that that makes you great. You know, if you're not just doing the cookie cutter way, it it is what what about you is different. How are you? Jay Z isn't a great rapper because he says the same fucking words as everyone else. He found a way to put his different spin on that shit, and that made him right. legendary. That spin, and that as a receiver, you have to allow your players to do as well. And I think some coaches don't have the confidence to allow their players to grow underneath them. Some players, some coaches don't know enough. But that fine line of like, here's the science of it, but then go take it and make it your own baby as well. Well, well, what you said, what, what 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 you said about you know, like 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 my boy receiver factor right there. That's my guy, footwork, D. Rob. You know, the, the, what you said about that part also could be the curse of the gift too, right? Because just because you have a podcast don't make you an expert. You know, just because you evaluate somebody, just because you evaluate, you know. A wide out doesn't make you an expert. So the the, pro the problem is that now that there is social media, you don't know you don't know who's you don't know who's an expert or not. Right. You know what I mean? Because right. you can sound like an expert from Twitter, but are you an expert? And so what happens is guys don't learn. Guys guys take guys will take five players, go coach them, and not go not learn. You know they they won't learn, and so you out there just talking. You just out there trying to impress the. You just trying to impress Instagram. You're not actually making the kid, the kid or the young man any better. And so that that part has been the curse of the gift of 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 social media in terms of the coaching and the, and the, and the, and the, the the you know the increase of trainers and whatnot because guys don't don't even learn like. Like people be like, ah, oh, Dub, you know, the so and so doing your drills, and I never get mad because the drill don't even look good. Right, because right, right, right. I'm looking at, I look at the drill, and the and the dude doing the drill ain't getting better if he do it like that. Mm -hmm. He might, he might as well do the, he, the coach might as well have him do his own drills because if mm -hmm. he doing those, if he doing my drills that way, it ain't gonna get him any better anyway. Right. And my point is, all the coach gotta do is hit me. I'll, I'll teach you the drill on MDMs. I will teach you the drill. I don't care. I don't care. I mean, that's that's why I post it. I love wideout play. I don't care who does what. Yep. I don't care. That's I love wideout play. I've been a wideout since 1989. I, I said I got pictures of me throwing up wideouts in 1992. Like I don't care about nothing. All I care about is wideout play, and that's it. I don't care if he's five or 55. That's all I care about. So. If 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 you go and so I'm not gonna go out. I'm not gonna take some a group of kids, copy a whole bunch of drills, and then post them on Instagram like it was good. It's not good. It's not, you don't. How'd you explain it? Like, do you even know what you talked about? Like, I would never do that as a person. That don't even make any sense. Right. That's not even right. common sense. So if you gonna like, if if, if anyone want to do my drill, hit me. I'll tell you the, why how to do the drill. Exactly. The coaches don't care. I've seen their names that have hit me. 
And yeah. then, and then when they, and when, and then when they, I watched them do my drills, I was like, Coach, that's that's pretty good. You yeah, know, right. I mean, the kid, don't, the kid don't have to look like Tyreek Hill, but as long as he, as long as he, he because the drill is what you're trying to get out of the drill. The drill yes. is not the boss. The intent is the boss. You know, mm. it's not about doing the drill right. Mm. It's about what you're getting out of the drill. And so, as long as you get out of the drill, what you want to get out of the drill, that makes it right. You know, what I mean, that's why, that's why, I, that's why my drills are what they are because I want you to get some out of the drill. I don't want you to do my drill for the sake of me having whatever kind of drill. The drill is only good if you got some out. No doubt. You know I mean, the drill is only good if you got some out. If you, if you didn't get, if you didn't get what you need out of the drill, the drill ain't any good. No and doubt. so, and so, a lot of coaches, trainers, whatever the case may be. They don't understand that, and so that's why the kid is just out there doing cardio. He might as well just jump rope because he because you just not, you just you just did you didn't get better at football. You know, you just didn't get better at football, no, no. and, and, and that's and, and that's the curse of the gift of Instagram and apps because coaches. There's two things that's true about coaches. Coaches are got the biggest egos, and they're the most insecure, and that and that, and, and that's a slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's true. Slope. You got you got a big ego, and you equally insecure. Well, that ain't that ain't that's not a good combination. And so guys, guys that get on here, and they'll take the kid out to the field, and they'll just have him do drills that they don't know nothing about, just to say we got it in today. Mm -hmm. So now you now you really only care about yourself because you don't care about the kid because you didn't even do the research to get him right. Real you, you, talk. You, 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 you didn't even do the research to get him right. So really, you, you really only care about it. You really only care about posting you because yes. you didn't even do the research to get the kid right. Whether he paid you or not, it ain't about, you know, you people say, well, he just wanted the money. Even if, even if you didn't get, even if he didn't pay you, you, you wasted the kid time. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't do the research to get him right. And so I never will ever, 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 ever be like that. Never, not once. When you come to me, we get, if we stand out there five minutes, you're going to get better for five minutes. Yep. If, if if we out there five years, you're gonna get better five years. And that's it. All I care about is that. All I care about is that. And 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 I don't care about no posting, nothing. All I care about is did you get better with me? What did you get out the drill? This is what we're getting out the drill. This is what we're getting out the drill. This is what you're trying to get out the drill. If you don't get that out the drill, the drill ain't any good. We wasting time. And we wait and we're not gonna waste time. I already put the thought into it, so that's what I'm saying. I'm, right. up at, I'm up at 2 a.m. My wife thinks it's Jason State Farm. I right. already got the thought into it. When I walk out there, I know what I know. I already know it's good. Cause I already put the thought into it. I'm fanatical about it. I already know it's good. So when we get out there, all you got to do is do what I say. You're going to be better. I put the thought into it. I did my part. I put the thought into it. You ain't got to worry about that. I'm prepared. I put the thought into it. So when we get out there, it's, it's, we, we live at 5. I, I, I did the research for you. I did it. I did it. We wrote it. But these other guys, because of Instagram, because insecure ego, you know, we, we, they, they care more about the post than they do the content or they do the effect. Right. And, and that, that's, un, that's, un, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. And helping the kids. I think that's, that's, the, that's the coolest thing about talking to you, man. We could go all night, but it's like two things you touched on. Like, hey, just, just like you were saying, talking about the drills. Like, that's how we kind of became close was that. I saw you right away and, and looked up to you and admired your work, and we just started talking. And, and you, uh, it, it meant a lot to me when you would go out of your way, a drill that, you know, I might have gotten parts from you or whatever. Maybe it was a drill I didn't even get from you, and you would go out of your way to say, hey, yo, you know, watch your guys' feet on that drill. They're a little bit too wide. Or, or watch this. Just, like, little things looking out. And I think that's what the coaching community should be about. And I think that in the coaching community, in coaching, in teams, that kind of is what it's about. But this weird fucking Instagram world of like all this shit it's it's it, it's different than than the way it should be where it should be collaboration it should be a, you know a great coach up and a young great coach get better like that sort of that sort of shit but all these egos and security like you said it, it, it ruins a lot of that but see and, and that's why you know like you said i hit you on the side i'm like and, and i'm just i'm just telling you tidbits like you know look at that look at this is because you see what what happens is i to me i should be that way you know, I, I look at myself as that way. When I, when I was a young whippersnapper, my coach was that way. I reached out to him every day. We used to have professional – when I was at San Jose State, we would have professional development. You know, you go visit certain coaches. I would always go see CJ every time. My head coach would be mad because he'd be like, why don't you go to see the Tennessee guy or the Texas guy? Or the I said, no, bro. I, if, you, if, with this, if this is for professional development, that man going to develop me. And mm -hmm. so – 
he he at that point he was a triple OG. At this point, I feel like that's how I should be. So right. if if I'm if I'm close with you and I'm watching your stuff and I and I and I and I see something that 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 I think you could improve on, if I don't hit you, then we not boys. Exactly. Exactly. You know, like like I'm I'm never gonna be a sucker about nothing. So if I don't hit you, then I shouldn't talk to you ever again because we not boys. Mm -hmm. So if I watch that and I see something, I'm a I'm a suggest and, and when I and when and when I suggest it to you, I don't say nothing to you like you better do it or nothing like that. I just I I just say, hey, you know, you know, make sure you know you, you don't want the feet to be too wide because of this and that. Yeah. You you can agree or disagree, but I feel like if we boys, then I should I should do that. I think that's what it's about. That that's really what Instagram is for, but people have people use it for other reasons. No, there's no doubt, and, I, and I'd like to see more of it amongst more stuff like this. There's more of it amongst the because, like, but like you said, you, you've been coach, you've been you've been part of wide out since the '80s, since the '90s. Like, like you just care about wide out play, and wide out culture, and putting out content to help improve people. Like, I think that's something I'm trying to do with my brand right now. Like, I started Savage Hustle because I saw a white space of where there needed to be better educational football content available to the masses, and it was it was shocking to me when I got to the D1 level and realize, holy shit, there's so much information that's guarded from people, right? Like there's so much, there's so much incredible information at the highest levels that no, that the high school coaches don't hear, the D3 coaches don't hear, and therefore their players never hear. Whereas, and if you could just make that information readily available, some of the techniques, some of the, the philosophies readily available to the masses, then the whole culture would improve. So that was like- But, 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 but see, but, but what I'm telling you is that, what I'm telling you is that coaches, are egotistical and insecure. So that's why they're guarded. A, a, a person who's an independent trainer or somebody working independent, they don't have to be guarded because, right. because they, 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 they're they not they're not under that umbrella. And so that's how come it's easier to be open, it's easier to be candid, it's easier to be frank, it's easier to be unbiased because you don't because you're not you're not you're not you're not you're not tied to any you're not tied to any certain any 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 entity. You're not right. tied to, you're not tied to that. And so and so, and so, what happens is, what happens is, the, the, the coaches are so ego. Their, their ego is their ego is high, and they're insecure, so they got to be guarded. Yeah, right. You know, well, I mean, they got a, 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 a man with a big ego and a in a large level of insecurity. That's a dangerous person. Yep. It, 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 kid, kid, kids in that and that's a dangerous person. You know, and so I just happen to be raised a certain way as a as a as a man as an individual. That I just, I just would never allow myself to, to, to be that way. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because it's a hundred percent about the kids. It's a hundred percent about white I play. It's a hundred percent about who I'm in front of and who trusts me for five minutes. If you trust me for five minutes, then you're gonna get five minutes of, of some hell of of, of some hell of work and dedication. That, that, that's what I, that, that's what I think we owe each other. Yep. You know what I mean? And and I and I and I, I can't do it any other way. You know, and so that's what happens. But now you get on here and everybody's so thirsty for attention that that the real reasons, the real reasons get get ignored or or they don't even come to they don't even come to the surface. You know what I mean? Because you gotta understand what attention is, thirsty attention. So like 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 I've said, if if you got like right now, if you if you got a if you got a haircut and you went to the mall. You got a haircut. You went to the mall, and ten people said, "Dang, coach, that's a pretty good haircut." Ten people, just ten. And you say, "Gosh, that's a pretty good haircut." You walk out of the mall thinking you was Justin Timberlake. You would think you was fly. <laughs> like, like, like ten people said you had a nice haircut. Ten. That's a lot of people. Imagine if you look on Instagram and a hundred people liked what you did. Imagine yep. how much. Imagine how much, how much of a how much of a thirst demon you'd be then. Imagine if it's 500 people that like your clip. Imagine how much of a thirst demon you are there. So now you don't care. Now you're addicted. Yep. Now you're addicted. So now you're thinking more about the likes than Absolutely. the likes than, than the effect. But see, I, 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 ne I never, I never, I, I, I'm, I'm naturally not that way because I've been, I've been, I've been doing this since 2001, 1997. I've been coaching cones and had guys on the cones before YouTube, before you could film anything. Mm hmm. So, so when 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 it, when social media came out, I thought it was, I thought it was a blessing because now let's just talk wide out play. I I never knew that it would turn into this. Right. I never knew that it would turn into an avenue to uplift yourself as a as a young as a young uh, uplift yourself as an individual over 
in proving who you're spreading, I never spreading information that will help people. No doubt about right. it. And that, that's why that's why that's why people love you is because you started out just saying, look, look, look at Larry Fitzgerald route. This route is cold. Mm -hmm. Like you don't you didn't know Larry Fitzgerald. You that's may it. never meet Larry Fitzgerald. But you you loved wide out play and you like let, let's like this wide this route is cold. Let's break this route down. It's good, yeah. And then people say, dang man, you know, I'm glad you posted that. Then you post, then you post Andre Johnson. You like, and then and then you like, you know, I'll keep doing it because I love wide out play. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Let's talk about it. No doubt. You know what I mean? No and doubt. Then you start learning. Then, then then you keep learning and your knowledge base that you already had and you keep learning. And so then all of a sudden now you're working with a couple of dudes and you like, well, let's do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's the real part of it. That's the real part of it. But but when you get in there, you say, well, you know, um, I'm this kind of guy. I'm that kind of guy. Well, we'll see. You know what I mean? But you're not you're not doing it for the right reason. And it's unfortunate. But you can't control people. But that but that's where it starts. The ego and the insecurity is where it starts. It's well said, man. We can go all day, bro. We got we got to start a podcast together or some shit, bro. I think that shit would break would break the wild out culture. Hey, we can do it, baby. Do it. Hey, it, I, I, I talk, we can talk about what we can talk about. Why I, I was on live, I was on live like last week. I was messing around. I had to start over three times. It yeah. was the hour, the hour ended like three times. Yeah, yeah. I, I just logged back in to my iPad. That's the only reason we stopped. Because we could talk about it all day.